Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with episode number 260 of Ask Dave. We're again doing a video every day during this uh, time of emergency where we're all stuck inside. I'm trying to bring a little bit of cheer to everybody who's stuck uh, staring at four walls or can't work or dealing with uh, all sorts of issues with bill paying, getting food, whatever it may be. I know it's a rough time out there. If you're a ham radio operator, get on the air. Talk to other people. And be sure to spend a little time calling your neighbors seeing how they're doing, making sure that they have what they need. Uh, do what you can in some creative way to help out. Um, there are people who are having trouble getting food, people who can't afford it. Uh, all kinds of things going on right in your neighborhood. Do everything that you can uh, to help other people. And get on the air and, and bring some cheer to other people. Now here's what I did today, something very different. Um, I have 45 years experience in ham radio. I have zero years, zero days, zero hours experience building a computer. So that's what I did today. I built a computer um, under Brad Rich's direction. He builds all his own computers. Uh, we put together a parts list for a computer that would do very well for video work uh, to replace this uh, HP pavilion here that keeps blue screening on me and come up with something really powerful for video work uh, and yet not too expensive. Well, I put it all together today as you're going to see in these slides. Something a little different, I said. And in the slides, I'm going to explain the problem I had. So when I'm uh, done explaining that, I'll, I'll give my plea for help. Here's the first thing I did. I took a long piece of wire and attached it to the uh, grounding bar in my station. And the other end, I just sort of looped through my watch band there. That's not a very huge contact, but it is a perfectly good static ground to make sure that I can deal with all of these uh, parts of the computer without any problem. This is the Intel processor, a Core i7. I wanted a Core i7 because my last laptop had one and it worked real well. This Core i5 I have in this machine right now, this Pavilion so-called gaming PC is uh, pretty uh, um, uh, 90 pound weakling. Um, anyway, I've got the Core i7. Of course, this computer, uh, when running, should far outstrip this laptop and do really wonderful things. One thing they say is don't touch the top of that thing because you're going to put goop on it and try and do thermal transfer. This is what the back side of that thing looks like. Look at all those pins. Good grief. <laughs> Good thing I don't have to solder to them. So here is the motherboard in its uh, protective wrap, and then I took it out. <clears throat> These, uh, um, well, we can go in just a little bit and look around on the motherboard. The actual processor sits right here and is locked into place here. These over here are where the memory goes. I have two memory cards for a total of 16 um, gigabyte of memory. One goes here and one goes here, oddly enough. Um, and then um, these are the I.O. that's on the back of the computer. And there's a little battery that keeps the clock alive. And uh, these are, this is where the graphics card will plug in right here. And over here is the main power uh, connector. Uh, this is for uh, some of the uh, USB uh, on the front of the case. Uh, there's more USB over here on the back. There's a plug right up here for 12 volts, and we'll talk more about that because I got in trouble on that one. Uh, let's get this back to here and go to the next one. This is where the processor will be installed right here. There's a little plastic cover that apparently you need to keep if something needs to go back. There's the processor in its spot. Note the little corner right down there where it's supposed to go. There's a little notch there and there so that everything only goes in one way. And now I've got the cover down and I bring the uh, bar down. This is the cooler. Uh, you got to take this plastic slip off here and then put some goop on there. Uh, these are heat pipes. 
And if you don't know what a heat pipe is, look it up on uh, Wikipedia. Uh, the way a heat pipe works is whatever the temperature is here, it will be all the way around the tube. So there's a huge set of fins here that will carry away the heat in a fan to do the carrying. And you get another look at it right here. You can see this flat surface that sits right on top of the processor. And you put, there's a little thermal goop that you put on there. And then this thing is held very tightly against that processor. And look at all the fins that are in there. So these are the screws that came with the uh, cooler and good grief the instructions for this thing cover every possible circumstance between now and the beginning of time and uh, as it turns out you only use a few of them i used these right here plus these this is actually a tool here's the thermal goop okay the rest of them did not get used oh these little things are rubber grommets that go in between these and the motherboard and it kind of keeps the vibration down a little bit this thing has to mount on the back of the motherboard and it only took me about an hour to figure that out uh, the instructions uh, have pictures only because they're supposed to be quote universal graphics well baloney um, it was uh, quite a challenge figuring out just which way to put this in. This is on the back side of the motherboard to provide strain relief for what's on the front side there. You see here is the cooler mounted. There's little uh, things here mounted with you really screw them down and then they've got some heavy springs to keep a real strong push of this thing down on top of it. The airflow goes in the fan and out the back, which is up, because heat tends to flow up, so I didn't want to try and push heat down. So the thing is set up to go up. There are no instructions, of course, on doing it which way or another, but there it is. This is a picture of the top of it. It plugs into a specific uh, port here in the uh, uh, on the motherboard. Um, and I want to bring your attention again to this little uh, over on the uh, right hand side you see the little silver tower and then if you go just a little left of that you see uh, eight holes for a power connector where I miswired something and I'm paying the price for that right now um, you know, I, I really was quite enamored of that thing. It was very hard to put on. I'm sure if I didn't have to try to interpret those instructions and knew just what to do, I could get that thing on in a heartbeat. But uh, huh, so much for a heartbeat. Um, this is the memory stuck in there. there. It's actually in the second and let's see, the first and third slot in there. Is that it's what the uh, motherboard instruction said to do and here is the motherboard ready to go in the case this is the little plate that uh, the motherboard goes up against uh, it's got ample things so it can ground against it and then it's got labels for all the different things and here is the motherboard uh, in position um, there's a grand total of one right there a little pin that sticks up through the motherboard. Note over here uh, on the um, uh, this right here and this and there's another one down at the bottom. The screws are here and there's a screw down over here somewhere and a screw up over here which means this part of the board is cantilevered out over the uh, mounting points so when you push real hard to push that power conductor air power connector and you're actually pushing the motherboard down and somehow that seems wrong to me um, and I don't like that I, I I think it would have been better if that board weren't cantilevered over like that um, this is the power supply it's got some uh, big fat cables coming off the bottom and then a spot over here where you can plug in the cables that you need. And uh, it goes in looking like this. It actually sucks from the bottom, sucks air from the bottom, 
there's a little screen on the bottom to keep the dust out uh, but that means I'm going to have to set this thing on a piece of wood rather than on the carpet because the carpet will uh, kind of block the uh, air from getting up into the power supply. Uh, here's the great big cables coming out of it. Um, and of course the big thing to do of course is to root these cables so they aren't just in the middle of everywhere so you can have a a very neat installation oh so important to have a neat installation as if anybody cares but I guess people do care so anyway I want you to notice something here this is really important right there right there there's one two three four pins across these pins here are negative, or ground rather, and the top ones are 12 volts. Now I know that this is a really uh, bad uh, picture, but I don't have a better one. And I want to draw a circle around this part right here because you'll note that this uh, plug is split into two parts. And I have um, this part over here is inserted correctly and this one right here got inserted one up and somehow when I pushed that in it snapped into place but that meant that the 12 volts from this were floating and ground was connected to 12 volt pins those four pins across the top are 12 volts handling high amperage and um, I shorted it this was a short in the thing and that may or may not have anything to do with the symptoms that uh, I'm having with the thing. Uh, let's um, go on. No, we're not going to record that. I know what the problem is. Okay, now this is the main power connector to the board. This has got plus five, plus three. It's got a couple minus voltages and so on. Not enough 12 volts in there to run the whole motherboard. And then here's the memory. Okay, now uh, this right here is uh, the USB sockets for the front. Uh, there's all kinds of weird little connectors and stuff. This right over here is the um, pin that's on the motherboard that aligns, uh, the pin that's in the case that aligns the motherboard. Um, down at the bottom here are a million connectors. These connectors right here are the connectors that come from the front panel. It's the one, it's the power switch, the reset switch, the uh, disk I.O. light, and the power on uh, light. These are your SATA connectors for disk drives. I've used three of them because I've got a uh, one terabyte solid state drive. I've got a two terabyte uh, regular, uh, it's a Western Digital Blue drive, so it's fast. And then this one right up here goes up to an optical drive. So I've got one left uh, if I need it. Um, and then these over here are for running additional USB ports. And um, I don't even know what half of these connectors are for. I ran out of SATA connectors. I was only given two. I found this third one. Uh, down in my junk box from a previous computer teardown and uh, it is a SATA connector um, and then that should work I hope um, by the way I did try disconnecting it and it did not solve the problem that I was having uh, this is the little solid state drive I've got to tell you you put this thing in your pocket and you don't even know anything's in there it's as light as a feather Here's the power for it. Here's the SATA uh, connection on there. Um, and down in this bay right here is the hard drive. It just slips in and self-locks. There's no uh, uh, screws involved. Um, here's all the power cables so very nicely attached and put out of the way and so on and so forth with the uh, front panel attached. Here is the optical drive. It is a Blu-ray drive, but I don't know where I'm going to find a driver for this thing. We'll see. Maybe LG has one. Uh, this is the back of the uh, the, 
the wider um, this is the hard drive, it's two terabyte hard drive. Uh, the little um, uh, two and a half inch uh, solid state drive is up here on the top. This is the wire from uh, one of the uh, chassis fans. Uh, this is the graphics card, nothing special. Not even big enough to require its own power cord, even though I had one. Uh, it'll drive HDMI. Here's a DVI, and then here's some successor to HDMI that goes up in, in here. Uh, it's a GE Force GTC. It's an NVIDIA card. Um, here's the back of it if you want to see tiny, 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 little, itty-bitty, teensy-weensy surface mount devices. There you go. Okay. And here it is in place. Um, this uh, very nearly completes the installation. This cable down here, which is real fuzzy, uh, is the audio for the front panel. Um, and you can see everything in it um, doing what it should. So the hope is that uh, I'll get this thing working someday. Here's all the cables on the back side before they were properly uh, tied down. Here they are all tied down, all ready for power on testing, which I did. And uh, that's what didn't work. Let's talk about that. Well, that was interesting. Let me tell you the symptom I have. When I push the on button, I get a brief flash of the LED. The fans in the computer make a little half twist and then everything shuts down. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong, and I would be absolutely delighted to get your suggestions. So put them in the comments to this video. I'll look through them. I'll uh, see what I can do to try them. I really appreciate it. i got to get this computer up and built. Um, so thank you so very much for your uh, consideration in that regard. Let's see. It's uh, time to toot my own horn. Please go to decastlercom support. Horn tooted. Until we next meet, 73.